Listen to the Roman Gabriel Show Real Show at RomanGabrielShow.com or wherever you listen to podcasts. Jack Youngblood here promoting Gabe on the new Roman Gabriel Show. Hi, I'm Roman Gabriel. Join me for the Roman Gabriel Show this fall right here on DBNA Television. Now it's not, we know now. You ready? Yes. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Welcome to the Roman Gabriel Show. Roman goes up close and personal with high impact difference makers from the world of sports and entertainment. Get more exclusive content at RomanGabrielShow.com. Now, here's your host, Roman Gabriel. Good friend in the house, uh, known her for a long time. CBS Sports it started out when, when CBS was the number one in the world and Brent Musburger and Jimmy the Greek and Irv Cross, a fellow teammate of my father. So Leslie Visser stopping by. Leslie, it's always great to see you. Roman, I think we've done this for 25 years. I know. But do you know that CBS spent so much time here in Minneapolis 25 years ago when I was uh, privileged to present the Lombardi Trophy, but it was also the Final Four was here and uh, the World Series. I know. Black Jack Morris. Is I that mean, 86? No, 92. 92, It was that's when right. the Redskins beat, and you know, do you think this was when, was when the Redskins beat, beat Buffalo? Buffalo. And um, don't you think we all underrate Jim Kelly? Oh, yeah. We forget him. Everybody forgets him. Jim Kelly's one of the great ones of all time. We were talking about this the other day, Super Bowl champions, and I was talking to somebody. Frank Reich was yeah, here. Sure. I talked to Frank, and he's a good friend. And uh, I think what the Bills did, going two four Super Bowls, was maybe one of the great feats in sports history. It, it w- absolutely was, and but for that, you know, five Google. inches, I do think Jim Kelly. We would put him. You know, we put Marino there sure. without a ring, and but we would put Jim Kelly much closer. Right. You know, I mean, I'm not saying Brady or Montana. But remember, but, though, Leslie, what he did. You know, I was in the USFL. That's and what right he did too. in the USFL was ridiculous. With I mean, Jim was just so talented. And really, the offense they ran with the Gamblers is what they do today. If he'd have run that offense at Buffalo his whole life, yes. you know, because they, they had Thurman, Thurman Thomas. I mean, they could run the football, too. So he was the kind of guy who could throw it every down if he needed to. The K-Gun. Playing now. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It was. It was what uh, they did was amazing. You know, it was so... It was so much fun um, to see the Redskins uh, win it, even though it was at Buffalo's expense. The game wasn't even close. But it was, um, you know, that was such a great Redskin team. It was the fun bunch, the receivers, and uh, they ran that counter tray all the time. And the one that they won here was Mark Rippon. Right, Mark. Yeah. And that was a great game for him. It, it, great for him. You know, one of the things that I love about you is, is that you were a star in the business as a woman in sports and accepted so far before this whole thing began. Um, but how does it feel for you to, to have been a foundational figure for young women in this business? Uh, thanks for asking that, Roman. I finally embrace it. I didn't want to wear it for a long time, but um, Michelle Tafoya just said to me the, uh, the other day, she said, you took all the firsts. <laughs> and it was true, you know, first woman to cover the NFL as a bead, first woman on many, many, you know, NBA broadcasts, World Series broadcasts. Uh, so I covered 35 Final Fours. So I, for a long time, I just really said, well, I just love sports the way other kids love music, you know, or poetry or the law. I just love sports. And we have a mutual friend, I think, that you got to work with one of the greatest ever in Brent Musburger. I mean, he was so great. You know what, Brent, I, the two I had who were like that, Brent Musburger and Al Michaels, you never felt you didn't know where the broadcast was right. going. They never left you hanging. Um, Brent, I hope nobody sees this. Can I tell you an off-the-record story? Yeah, yeah sure. Okay, my very first um, television assignment, I went from the Boston Globe right to CBS, and it was the U.S. Open tennis. And do you remember Hanna Mandlikova? I heard the name, I think. She was a great player. She was from Prague, behind Martina. Uh-huh. And uh, so my very first assignment... Brent's hosting the U.S. Open. He says, let's go out to uh, Court 16, Leslie Vissers with Hanna Mandlikova. So uh, she had a great run that summer. She won the U.S. Open. I said, to what do you attribute your sudden rise in the rankings? And she says, well, I think it is my new couch. So I thought, I don't know, maybe she's sleeping better or something, you know. 
So I say, oh, did you get some new furniture? And she looks at me and she says, don't be ridiculous, Billie Jean King, my new coach. <laughs> <laughs> so Brent's head just hit the table and CBS would play it like every year, every year. But um, he what was a, great to work with. And Brent's hanging out in Vegas now, right? I mean, loving it. I heard him, I heard him the other day doing something, man. You know, he's right in his element with Vegas and the Lions, and now the Raiders are coming to town. He loves it. I went out and saw him. He's, uh, he's got his own company. I think it's Vision. And uh, they're not, you can't place bets with them, but they're informational. Right. Yeah. But I wanted to ask you, you know, the NFL was so staunch about gambling all those years ago. And how in the world did you guys get away with Jimmy the Greek and the, all, and the lines and the whole deal at that time? You know, I think, uh, I think people are naive if they didn't think that gambling wasn't the underpinning mm -hmm. of the NFL. I mean, back then, I mean, why, why would you watch Tampa Houston Oilers? You right. know, what, what would be the... So I think that it, it was, you know, one of that kind of intentional blindness because now, you know, now even Adam Silver came out with the NBA, said, yeah, let's allow gambling. What was it like working with John Madden? Oh, he was brilliant. He was, um, I wrote a book, which is why I'm here um, uh, going around. Well, we'll tell get me the name it. of the book. Uh, I'll tell you that in a okay. second, but I'll tell you John first. So I had the privilege of, I think I rode his bus with him for like five or six years. And um, he was so brilliant. You know, he would, we'd be riding through Utah on our way to a 49er game or something. And he would just look out the window and out of nowhere say, dark chocolate. I, I don't get it. it. It's like they got halfway to milk and quit. <laughs> so you heard original. it all then? Heard it all. Plus he would, we'd watch a lot of film. You know, watched a lot of films. Well, so you got a chance to look at it from a coach's eyes. I really did. It was a privilege. I oh, mean, I it was bet. really a privilege. And, you know, people say, well, it's so much shorter if you fly there. But no. no. So For much. your career, it was an awesome was move, right? It was really a privilege. Very few people get that opportunity that yes. aren't in the locker room. Yes. It was you just know, It reminds like, me of my father. When I was nine years old, my dad would come home every day. We had the old, I still have his 16 millimeter projector that he used to have the clicker with, <laughs> right? And we used to go in his back office, and I was nine, and... And my dad was so meticulous at studying film and studying each individual and knowing exactly what everybody was doing on both sides. And so I was thinking, this will be really cool. I want to see the game, right? And so about half hour through, he's not off of one play, right? And he's just <laughs> going back and forth, back and forth. It's like, Dad, will you just let it go forward well, so I can see what happens? He goes, well, well that's not what I'm doing. He goes, I, you know, I want to show you how to study. And it's like, so he showed me how to study film. And you're right, it's, a, it's an art. Well, John said he went once to listen to Vince Lombardi, and he spent like seven hours just on the Packers sweep. And John said, I thought I knew football, but he no. spent hours and hours on one play. You were a star in the business as a woman in sports and accepted so far before this whole thing began. I just really said, well, I just love sports the way other kids love music, you know, or poetry or the law. I just love sports. What's the biggest change from back then covering the NFL to today, you think, for the, the women that are in it today? Uh, there are a few changes. Um, one, when I started, Radio Row was a row. <laughs> An actual row. <laughs> a row. <laughs> like four people. Yeah. And uh, back then, everybody smoked in press boxes. Really weird. And, uh, of course, there weren't ladies' rooms when I started because yeah. there were no other women. So, I mean, the changes are, I love it now that any young woman yeah. can grow up and so say, many. I want to cover sports. Yeah, there's so many. It was great. In the beginning, we all knew each other. You know, we'd go to each other's marriages or whatever, weddings, births. But um, now, I don't know. Hey, kids, it's Coach D here. Whatever you're dealing with, you have to find a way to get through it. So create your own routines. How do I do that? I set intention. I take and choose the action that matches that intention. So if I want to make time to go work out, then I got to set a time and then I got to stay committed to doing it and go follow through with what I intended to do. That great intention and a lot of people I find have good intentions but they don't always have the action behind it to follow through with the intention. I can tell you now, if you just pick little things every single day, intention, action, your result will come to you. And a lot of times that result will be a very positive aspect of your day. And it, positive aspects of our day, little nuggets of that. I am just giving you a little nugget for today. 
and reminding you that how you react matters. Your reaction to things is your choice. Setting an intention is you choosing something with a positive attitude to go do for you and following it with that important action behind it because the intention doesn't matter unless the action is there to follow. Then you're gonna start getting results. Without really knowing it, you're gonna start moving forward and up because if that's the direction you intended to go and you had all the little actions behind it, that's typically the direction and result you'll end up getting and the direction you'll end up going is up. 1% better a day, guys. I'm Coach D. Go to soldouttv.com and take the pledge to not drink or do drugs. See you soon. Welcome back to the Roman Gabriel Show. Roman goes up close and personal with high-impact difference makers from the world of sports and entertainment. Get more exclusive content at romangabrielshow.com. Now, back to the Roman Gabriel Show. Now yeah, Laura Oakman, right? Yeah, of course. She's great. She's doing this galvanized program where she's, um, I guess, tutoring college young ladies that want to go into sports or young ones that are trying to move up in the business. And I always see these incredible photos and pictures of her on the sidelines. She's communicating and partnering with teams where she'll go into the Oilers or and they, they get to find out what teams are looking for Correct. from a sideline person. I thought that was just an awesome idea uh, to take, you know, because she's been a veteran for a long time. And she knows what she's doing. And I try to tell women two things. Uh, one, turn the sound down. And what do you see? Do you see the safety blitz? You know, or can you see Syracuse's 2-3 zone? You know, can you see? Don't wait for us to tell you. You see if you can see it. And the other thing I tell them is, if you don't love it, don't do it. <laughs> tell, tell, me, tell, me a, tell me a sideline story uh, that, that people uh, would be surprised by. Uh, well, it was always very cold in Lambeau, as you know, and I was spent half my life in Lambeau because uh, when I first went to CBS, we had the NFC package. And um, so, of course, it was always the Packers, all cold places. Yeah. Packers, I mean, you know how cold, well, they were indoors, but um, how cold the Bears were, how cold the 49ers were, the Giants, you know, everybody cold. So one time I bought these, like, hunting socks, and they had these big D batteries hanging out the back. And, of course, they went dead in the second quarter. I'm clumping around Lambo with these big, giant D battery socks. And John Madden, on the air, said, that's the most pathetic thing I've ever seen. Oh, you mean <laughs> during the broadcast? During the broadcast. During the broadcast. And you heard this? Of course, I'm clumping around. This is a that's so funny. loser bill. Because they wouldn't let us near you guys. You know, the bench, you have the warmers, but they don't let the sideline. Well, that's the name. That's the name of a guy that, you know, the guy that, that that set the tone for what covering football is about. Nick Saban's a lot reminds me a little bit of John Madden. Not the personality, but the the attention to detail, the the love of the game of coaching. It's like they tell me that that Saban, won't, you, if you're the secondary coach, he's going to coach secondary because <laughs> that's what he does. He loves coaching individual yeah. players. John just seemed to be a guy that. His passion for the game was just absolutely off the charts. Limitless. And what a surprise that Saban's best friend is Bill Belichick. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> you're exactly right. You're, the, the two guys are right out of the same page, except Saban's probably a lot more colorful. <laughs> it, well, uh, uh, you can get to your book, and I'm going to tell you a quick story. I'm listening to the radio on Monday, and it's a beat guy interviewing Belichick, and it's on radio, right? And I don't do a great Belichick interview, but it was hilarious. Guy says, uh, so, Coach, uh, every Super Bowl that you guys have been in, you never scored in the first quarter. And he said, w what are you going to do about that? And uh, he has that voice as he says, uh, well, uh, thanks for pointing that out. But uh, when we're on offense, we're trying to score every time we get the ball. And when we're on defense, we're trying to stop them every time we get the ball. <laughs> Did you see the press conference where uh, when they lost to the Dolphins and um, someone asked him, were you looking past the Dolphins to Pittsburgh? And he just let it be dead air, which, you know, is the worst, right? Dead air for like 10 seconds and then just said, no. <laughs> I asked him a question Sunday night, and, and I've covered every one of the Patriots Super Bowls, yeah. so I know that you can't ask him a yes-no question because he'll go no. Right. So, I, you know, I, 
he really does intimidate you. Is he in a good mood? Does somebody just ask a stupid question before me? Am I going to get the wrath of somebody else? But I asked a very simple question. He answered it very nicely, and I thought that was... Yeah, he, I've always gotten along with him, and the reason is in 1979, Will McDonough, the great late Will McDonough, said to me, go over and introduce yourself to that uh, assistant, who's an assistant with the Giants, because he is going to be big someday. So I, we went over, and I had lived in Maryland, so we talked lacrosse, right? You talk lacrosse with him, you're, you're okay. Wow, wow. All right, so tell, tell me about the book. I don't. Do I have it here? Yeah, I can't hey, see it. That's hey, why I didn't know. <laughs> we're wait, we're, yeah, for we're, those on radio, wait. we're waiting for the book. Okay, so I All right, here we go. So hold so, that up for us. So wow, I wrote that's this a great book. picture. Well, when was I, that taken? Uh, it was right before the Super Bowl. Um, I was the only woman ever to present the Lombardi Trophy. Which Super Bowl? It was Bowl? Here, in, here in Minneapolis, the Redskins. Oh, that one. Okay, yeah, great. Redskins, Buffalo. Yeah, that so, looks good in you. The, so it's kind of polished and looking really well, nice. you know what? I want you to read a couple of the endorsements. Read okay. the one from Robert Kraft. Okay, so Robert Kraft says about... Leslie's book, Sometimes You Have to Cross When It Says Don't Walk, a well, memoir of breaking barriers with Leslie Visser. So Robert Kraft, the owner of the world champ, five-time world champion New England Patriots, says 40 years ago, we shouldn't have said that. We should yes. have said a few years ago, no. Leslie Visser covered my first professional team, the Boston Lobsters. She earned my trust, then as remained with my favorite people in sports, Leslie has always been one of the best at getting and telling a story. Now she tells her story. Wow. Thank you. You should well, have put title, that like, like. Well, no, I had CBS Les Moonves oh, up yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> well, we got we to pay, pay homage there. I'll tell you, the what a title good book. comes from, um, uh, I was 10 years old, living in Cincinnati. And um, I think back then, this is in the 60s, early 60s, women were teachers, nurses, homemakers. And my mother said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, I want to be a sports writer, wow. which was so weird, weird right? Yeah. And she said, great, sometimes you have to cross when it says don't walk. The, 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 the Roman Gabriel Show. Listen to The Roman Gabriel Show, Real show at romangabrielshow.com or wherever you listen to podcasts. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Roman Gabriel Show. My name is Roman Gabriel III. I will be your host for some exciting programming. And yes, if you heard that name, you're right. I'm the son of former quarterback, NFL Rams and Eagles, Roman Gabriel. Play the last 10 seconds and finish it. Yeah. You're going to hear about people who care about their profession, who are excellent at what they do, but about their life, about their families, about their faith about a lot of the things that mean so much to them and to you. We're gonna to talk to high profile people who aren't just great at their jobs, but they're great at life. So we appreciate you coming in with us. Really fired up, we're in the studio today. I'm with my co-executive producer, Nick Ruffini from Revoice Media. Nick, um, when we met, uh, I just had a feeling that you were the right guy for the Roman Gabriel Show, and I'm pumped to be doing business with you, my friend. Me too, me too. I love what you're doing with this program because there's so many shows out there that talk to high impact people, right? There's people who talk to athletes and entertainers and, and musicians, but they don't get the stories that you get. They don't talk about and cover the topics that you talk about inside of your program. That's why I'm so excited about it. Listen to the Roman Gabriel Show, Real. show at romangabrielshow.com or wherever you listen to podcasts. Sold out Youth Foundation for almost 10 years what our mission is, to impact the lives of students across this country and the way we do it is teaching them to live a lifestyle of alcohol and drug absence. Our mission is, and all these people that are on the show believe the same thing I do, that we have to impact the next generation. We have to use our platform to make a difference in these young people's lives and Agreed. sold out, our you sold out youth foundation is all about impacting the lives of students. Educate, encourage, and challenge. Our program is all about high impact people from the world of sports, entertainment, music, education, and military. We're gonna take you behind the scenes, up close and personal. You're gonna hear the incredible stories, inspirational stories of these people's lives. Success is not an accident. Success is actually a choice. And my question to you is, 
Are the habits that you have today on par with the dreams that you have for tomorrow? Our goal with Sold Out is to give you positive role models. It's cool to have this platform where I can go out there and impact kids' lives. But there's no secret to success other than hard work. Being able to push through those obstacles. Don't ever give up. Failure is part of life. You'll get through it and you won't be afraid to fail next time. It feels so cool to check off a goal. And it's good to have this come in and be a positive in our lives. Don't drink. I don't smoke. Never done anything like that. It's awesome to have sold out here today, uh, speaking truth in the lives of our, of our students. Every one of you in here is valuable. Every one of you in here needs each other's talents and abilities. To go to the website, it's soldouttv.com. It's very fast, as you can see here. Be hopeful, be intentional. I know sometimes it's hard in the situation you guys are in right now. You're at home. You want to be socializing with your friends. You want to be practicing with your team. You Stay close to your good friends. Exercise every day. Talk to people, whether that's FaceTime or whether that's a phone call or whether that's going outside and spending time with your friends. Be thankful and blessed that we live in the greatest country in the world. So this covers your career? It is. It's just so anecdotes. So it's more about anecdotes about your career, it is. stories it like is. you told me about John yes, Madden. And it's pictures. Oh wow! I think I have. Oh, That's you in the, the bus. bus. There's. I threw out the first pitch with Tony. Tony Larusa. Who's this? Interviewing Venus Williams. There. Oh, I, wow. I've done every sport. Every. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to give me one, right? Yes. And you're going to sign it for I me, will. right? I can't wait to read it. And you'll have fun because you can open it anywhere. You know what's great? What this would be great for too is some of these young ladies that want to be yes. sportscasters. But I want, I wanted, to, I sort of wrote it for anyone who has yeah. a dream. You know, I don't care if you're black or right. white. Where do you get it? Uh, where we get the book? Oh, you, uh, Amazon or here Barnes and Noble. Right, oh, so Barnes and Noble right here at Mall yeah, of America. Right here in oh, Mall of America. On. Everybody should step out and get that. Well, I hope. So are you doing are. like a tour? Yes, I've been. Uh, are yeah, you going to be on like a here. city tour? Where are you going to go? Yeah, I've been. I've been in Washington. I was on. Are you coming to CBS. North Carolina? You know what? Um, I go there for the V Foundation, but that's not on my list. But I should put Charlotte, it on my list. Charlotte, Raleigh. I should put it on my list. Well, you better but, tell me. All right. If you're coming, and I'll come down. We'll, okay. We'll, uh, we'll enjoy. Right. Leslie, uh, it's always a pleasure. It is Roman. We I have mean, a blast. You know. My dad worked with Brent Musburger for years doing a Big Ten football. Of course. And, he, and as meticulous as my father was about football, he wanted to be a great broadcaster as well. And was. And Brent was a tremendous mentor to him, helped him in so many ways. And so when I think about thinking about Brent without you is hard because uh, you guys were so tremendous as a team. And, of course, Irv Cross was such a good friend of our families when he played for the Rams and then one of the nicest men ever. You know what Irv told me? Uh, and he was right. He said, wait do you start doing sidelines in the cold? Your mouth freezes. And so I can remember going over to Jerome Bettis and saying, "You." it was a Monday night football game. I said, you have to have a great game because in this cold, I cannot be saying Mustafa Ma'afal or whatever his name was. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I said, really, you have to have a great game. <laughs> Leslie, thanks for coming by. Remember, you, Leslie's book, sometimes. sometimes you have to cross when it says don't walk. Her memoirs, her stories, and if you love sports, this is the one you want. Because it's an easy she's read, easy colorful. and breezy. And she's got a great sense of humor, so I know it's going to be funny yeah, too. Yeah, it is funny. The opening line is, is uh, when people ask me where I live, I say, baggage claim. There you go. <laughs> I like that. Thanks for coming on Sold Thank Out, you, Leslie, as always. Love you. Here, let me sign it for you. Yeah. Awesome. I can't so wait to read it. So this is what I learned, you know, that you have to sign on this page. Do you ah, know this? I did not know that. I, myself included, everybody else signs here, but that's not right. I learned this. Taking charge of your life and recognizing that excuses aren't going to work. Where you come from doesn't matter. What mistakes you've made doesn't matter. The bottom line is you all have talents and abilities. I'm Camille Schreier, Miss America 2020, and I want you to go to soldouttv.com and take the drug and alcohol abstinence pledge. Because the intention doesn't matter unless the action is there to follow. We have 70% of middle school students that when we see them, 
will take our drug and alcohol abstinence pledge, which is a three-step pledge that's accountable to their friends, parents, and coaches. I don't drink, I don't smoke, never done anything like that. I took the sold out pledge. We just had our sold out program in our assembly, definitely recommend it. As the future leaders of America, I think it's awesome that we have these people influencing us. Uh, showing us great role models. I learned a lot from it and I'm really excited to go on the website and learn more about it. For 25 years now, I've been working with teachers, coaches, and others who have been in the schools fighting this problem. Lead every ounce of effort. Make improvements. You can't ever think that you're satisfied. You they cut out drug and alcohol education programs. They cut out uh, interscholastic activities. Quickly raise your hand and tell me what that means to be alcohol and drug absent. Beautiful, okay, so no alcohol or drugs at all. That's called abstinence. These things are the things that all of us in here taught us teamwork, taught us how to deal with people, taught us how to communicate effectively, taught us how to win and lose us how to be accountable. It's the effect you have on others is the most valuable currency there is. Don't ever give up. Failure is part of life. You'll get through it and you won't be afraid to fail next time. So to embrace the fear. Is what I'm doing today helping me get closer to that goal? All successful people go after their goals and dreams with everything they have. Sold Out Youth Foundation. For almost 10 years what our mission is, to impact the lives of students across this country teaching them to live a lifestyle of alcohol and drug absence. Being successful where alcohol and drugs are not part of that game plan. Are you going to take that pledge? Raise your hand, let me know that you're going to take it. Up high, let me see it. Every one of you in here is valuable. Brand new fitness, health, and wellness page. And circle down, right hand down, left hand down. My mental skills tools, I'm going to give to you to help empower you, to help educate you. Good feet. Two. Training. Uh, weights. Three. You can repeat that cycle a couple times on each stretch. I do recommend that you include some electrolytes, maybe a sport drink. 20 minutes of exercise a day, no matter what it is, guys. And it actually releases positive endorphins into your body that can change your frame of mind, change your attitude. Some time to go to soldouttv.com today and check that success program out. They're going to talk to you about positive life skills, about character traits that all champions have. Create your own routines. How do I do that? I set intention. I take and choose the action that matches that intention. Take care of your health. Take care of your mental well-being. Set goals and be committed to your dreams and goals and being excellent and competing. I really appreciate the sold out program coming. I always tell our kids, you know, you got to put in 110% into everything that you do. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the Roman Gabriel Show. And for more exclusive video and audio archives, go to our official website at romangabrielshow.com. That's romangabrielshow.com. And enjoy. We'll see you soon. Listen to the Roman Gabriel Show, Show at romangabrielshow.com or wherever you listen to podcasts.